The Square Ball Podcast. Welcome to Propaganda, the show where we find out what's been said about Leeds United. Dan, Michael and Moscow with you on the show that's brought to you with Levi Solicitors. 10% off your legal fees at levisolicitors.co.uk forward slash the square ball. So what have Arsenal been saying about us then? Quite a lot by the looks of it. We've got a long way to go with this this setup, haven't we? If we're going to try and match what AFTV have been up to. Christ. I mean, I mean there would be a lot to go at, but it's they were all like saying the same thing more or less all 18 up. videos that they've done on the Leeds <laughs> have game. they genuinely done 18 there videos are 18 videos that's about not the, an exaggeration about the Leeds United match so it's only been two days how have they done 18 videos in 18, two days how many videos. how many people have they got working for them um I don't know really there's obviously Robbie's the main one there's the the Lee who will come on to who's the angry should be a Millwall fan bloke um it's Turkish I know him there's Ty I didn't see Ty he's the idiot one He's like the the real mm. sort of nominated. Um, let's all laugh at what he's saying. He gets angry. There's a few of them that get angry on live streams and stuff. About four uh, one win. Yeah, no, not about four one win. They're all fairly okay. happy. They're all they're all happy about that. Oh, that's it's all right now. That last part of the problem with Arsenal fan TV is that they're very reactionary. So now Arteta doesn't have to go to jail this week. Exactly. So they're all they're all dead happy at, at the moment, speculating as to whether they get the, in the top four. Someone even suggesting whether they could push on and finish in the top three. All this sort of, you know. So all their misery was completely justified. Wasn't yeah. It? So so the first their, clip, their tough tough life they've got. The first clip in their sixty thousand seater <laughs> stadium in London, so it's easy to attract players. We'll rewind to what surely from the sound of this clip must have been six months a year ago, but actually was the sixth of December. This was what they were doing following Everton, which we we did play. It was after the on the Brentford propaganda. I think we might have we might have had this clip in because it was just their their complete despair. Right. And this is uh, this is Millwall. This is how bad. This things... is Millwall fan disguised as an Arsenal family. <laughs> this is how bad things have got. Damari Gray done us over today. What is he going to do now? <laughs> can this cannot continue at this football club no more? Something has got to change. They are, they play, they played us off the park today. Seventh in the league again. You know what I mean? Just absolute priming points. Left, right, and centre with a fucking idiot in charge. Listen, we're meant to be, yeah? We're meant to be in this in this big six, Lee, yeah? We're meant we to be in this big six, six yeah? yeah? big six with this manager now. Last just, November. I told it, this is it. These three games that would tell, what is going to tell me everything I know about Mikel. Fuck off! <laughs> <laughs> so, so what, that was then what, they were so, so, hang on a second let's just recreate that something needs to change at this club something were, needs to change do you know what's changed they've won some games they'll never be big six they were seventh at the time <laughs> a points behind scum uh, three points behind uh, oh two points behind Tottenham yeah but Moscow fifth. something needs to change at this club yeah since I mean he was judging him on that three games and he needed to fuck off since then, they've had three games and they've been a 3 0 win against Southampton, 2 0 uh, West Ham, 4 1 against us. Mm. And everything's actually fine, <laughs> as it turns out. Anyway, onto the actual match itself. Yeah, the actual, I mean, the actual game, they were, they were just sort of saying they were dead good. I didn't, they were being really a bit, a bit overly smug about Martinelli. I couldn't be bothered including any clips because. I mean, do you, want, do, you do, this, do, you? do you want to do a quiz instead? Do we, <laughs> but do we want to hear him saying, like, oh, how good he was? Because then I just think my mind just goes, yeah, but he was. He was playing, playing against the child. He was playing against the child, making his Premier League debut. Like, so what? Don't prove anything. So I went to the interesting bits of the game. Listen to the penalty. Well, yeah, they weren't that asked. They thought it was after eventually. But the uh, the Jacques foul is fairly interesting because there was three of them on their the live stream. They weren't all in one room for this. I know sometimes they do they do watch longs all in one room, but the, the there was just the three of them on a split screen. There was a Turkish who is quite sensible from what the Arsenal fan TV stuff I've seen. He seems like he's he's kind of the sane one that they've nominated there's some other lad on it and then there's lee the angry man um <laughs> and you can as i said he's, he's kind of a millwall fan in disguise and his views on refereeing um and the foul that jacques did were kind of predictable but i, I quite like it players oh it's... granite jack has just done a granite jack has just done a granite special by stamping on the guy's Oh, no, leave it out. No way. Hey, that's Lee, that's a bad way. tackle, that. That's a really bad tackle, that. He didn't need to He's do it. He's got the ball there. He's got the ball. He's not got the ball. He's not got... I've got to say, and this is well, why... Well, look like he got the ball to me. 
No, he didn't, did he? I mean, I think he, in fairness, I think he did touch some of the ball. Yeah. But then he also did um, a big stamp on his ankle, which you're not allowed to do. No. But that said, should we leave Lee in charge of the refereeing? Because I feel like everyone will know where they are with it. At the moment, part of it is you don't, people don't know what's a foul, what's allowed, what isn't. I feel like with Lee, you, you know your line, don't you? And so if all the referees were operating under his guidance... Becomes, it becomes a fair game. So, so basically, it's one rule, isn't it? Is it one rule? Like, if you get the ball, you're fine. He does He does essentially go on to argue that. Because it, if, if um, Rafinha does that tackle at Chelsea, we, they don't get a penalty because he got the ball. Eventually, yes. <laughs> <laughs> he did do a bit of man first, but I think Lee would say that was fine. He does, he does essentially go on to argue that when he played football, if you got the ball, you could do what you wanted. And mm. the other two are trying to talk him round and be like, but Lee, no, that's, that's not the rule, though, Lee. You're not allowed to do that. And he's like, well... It's fine. <laughs> Eventually, they do they do sort of talk him round, um, and he does have to um, acknowledge that maybe it shouldn't be allowed to do that because there is a precedent in law. Were they talked around as soon as um, Cody Drama did it to one of their players? Did that <laughs> convince them that maybe? Well, it was it was Gelhart did it, wasn't it? Oh, Gelhart, yeah. Sorry. After. And in fairness to Lee, consistent, he was like, "Well, he's caught him a bit, I suppose." <laughs> <laughs> See Robertson at Spurs, he caught him a bit. <laughs> like, if he he could what he would have not even flinched. I know it wasn't a bad tackle, but the um the old dislocated ankle against Liverpool, mm. he'd have been like, Get up <laughs> You <laughs> soft slag. Walk it off. Harold, uh... Listen, you can get you can get uh, arrested for attempted murder. So um you know, um yeah. if it's intent there, like, you know, it, i suppose from that point of view, if you you are intending to to hurt an opponent, I suppose you you need to be punished for it, even though you don't actually do it. You, you see what I'm saying? Is he suggesting that somebody should have been charged with attempted murder there, or is he just drawing a parallel? I think it's it's a weird parallel, but it's just you can be arrested for committing crimes. He sounds like a man so. who's, who's learnt from bitter experience as well. <laughs> oh, I didn't know you could be, but I didn't even kill him. <laughs> I only thought about it. <laughs> but you were stamping on his thing. I was not doing it. Um, well, all right. There was a bit of intent there. <laughs> Bloody hell. You can't do anything these days. Anyway, so that was the end of Arsenal Fun TV. Really. Is that all we're going to do? There's no was, point in wallowing no, it. Eight, 18 videos. <laughs> and that's all there was. It was just them all going, oh, it's good, isn't it? Can you imagine a world in which we do 18 videos we about like, a game? We like bitterness. It's what, that's what this section's about. It's about hearing how angry they are about stuff. Mm. And there was none of it. Well, I mean, it's not even funny, is it? Because I'm not sure all of it was factual. So That is very true. Well, someone did um, highlight, I can't remember who it was now, a journalist was saying, oh, Leeds fans are singing Soft Southern Bastard at Martin Odegaard, but he's actually from 600 miles short of the Arctic Circle. <laughs> they don't even got, they've only got it factually correct. So, so egg on their faces. It's like, uh, football, I, I, football chants and podcasts can only be factual mm, from now and on. I, and I think everyone in Ellen Road did think all of Arsenal's players were they, all from within the M25, mm. was my understanding of it. So are if you, they've, if they've snuck an Norwegian in, then that is news to me. Sneaky. I mean, like, so when people sing to us, shit Yorkshire Bastards or whatever mm. is that allowed or is that wrong or it's it's not factually correct so, so we shouldn't get upset about that so it's not Rafinha's good. from North Brazil right mm. okay he's from further north than you <laughs> okay let's move on then to the wider world of propaganda what else has been said in the football world because you're right I don't need to sit here and listen to Arsenal being happy let's listen to people slagging off Bielsa and get ourselves <laughs> angry that's what I thought let's so, say you know if we do go down can we face championship propaganda next season? Or do I have to have a rethink? I mean, it's not. it won't be as easy because there won't be 18 videos produced by, you know, who's in the championship? Reading fans. Christ, 46 <laughs> match balls as well. But I mean, as I was, uh, <laughs> as I was on my COVID sickbed recently, sort of listening in, hoping that you were just about managing to keep the podcast going without strength me. to strength some people said what do i find out you started beef with a third division football team apparently they are now our rivals as soon as my <laughs> back is turned some tin pot rivalry is stoked up so i don't think we'll have any problem the champ championship propaganda will be a step up from picking fights with brentford i wonder you know if paul hackingbottom is onto this podcast because he stopped the whip ball the out ball if they someone's told him i'd be really annoyed about that mm. Because they beat Fulham last night, the Sheffield United. Four wins in a row. 
Sheffield Amazing, United, and they, they only conceded against Cardiff um, in a three-two away win. I was just looking. Actually, Paul Heckingbottom was trending on the Google last night. Not even the Twitter, but um, searches for him, um, particularly in Scotland, at full time last night. Are, uh, from, like the, the, from the Hibs region, by any chance? It could be. Uh, assuming it was a seven forty-five kickoff, ten minutes before the game started, there was a big Heckingbottom spike half time and then full time everybody's going mad for the heck and uh yeah quite a lot actually uh quarter to six this morning it's per- 46 it's- i don't know how many uh per whatever um all oh, right a value of 100 is peak popularity so he had 46 percent popularity for his searches at six o'clock this morning what's the time delay with um San Francisco. I think it's <laughs> Paragmarate out on the lookout for a new manager. He'd be, be get on the phone and be like, there's this guy tearing it up in the championship. He's, a, he's, young he's guy, local. Full of great ideas. <laughs> he's got two big ideas. Uh, one with the ball. But yeah, every week I'm listening to his bloody pre and post match press things to try and find whip ball without ball. Does he let you down this week? Nothing. What have we got then? We've got the football terrace, which is, you might remember this is the YouTube thing that gave a, um, a voice to Sonny, the Liverpool fan who wanted Pascal Strauch arresting for attempted murder. <laughs> Oh, um, he's, he's the one who pr- who's proven quite unpopular, bless him. Yeah, he's, I had a look. Since we made fun of his big desk, you know, he got his big desk. No, his big head. Small desk, big head. Yes. Tiny drinks bottle. He looked like a like a South Park character, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, the South Park. He's not done any videos since then. Oh, okay. bless him. So, but it's that same it's that same YouTube channel. This is run by someone called... Well, maybe, maybe he's fallen over, because if you've got a head that heavy versus <laughs> the rest of your body, he's like... The opposite Possibly. of a wee, you know, weebles used to wobble, but mm. they didn't fall down. Yeah. Maybe he's, he's toppled over, like maybe like a turtle on its back. Or maybe his mum's just said he can't use the conservatory anymore on a, <laughs> on a weekend. She's got, she's got friends over. Take that bloody green screen down, Sonny. Right, next. Go on, then. It's Terry Flewers. He's the man. Flewers? Flowers? I don't, he's got an E in the middle. I don't know. He's he's like Tim Flowers, but he's gone wrong somewhere. Um, but he was just having a, having a pop at us, basically, after the Arsenal game, and in particular, Bielsa. I think Bielsa is a great character. He, may, he probably is a great person. I don't know him. But people allow someone's personality to feed too much into their opinion on their profession, like how they are as a professional. And that for me is my issue with Bielsa. People use the word great next to his name. Fergie's great. Pep is great. Klopp is great. Arteta is great. No, joking. Wenger is great. Like the point I'm making is, is you can't call Bielsa great. Man's using man-to-man marking in 2021. Bro, that's the equivalence of me using a file of facts. That's the equivalence of me using Betamax. Man-to-man marking in 2001. And he don't change it for no one. This ain't the championship, my G. Scott McTominay got a brace against these men. Scott McTominay got a brace. And that's what annoys me about them. That's what makes me, that's what makes me so frustrated about watching Leeds United. Irrespective, I said the same thing when they played City. I said the same thing in all their games. This isn't an Arsenal thing. So Arsenal fans, please don't go, oh, you're not giving this credit. You were great. You were brilliant. I've already done the praise. But I'm talking Leeds for a minute. I want them out of this league so bad. I give me 19 Burnleys over one Leeds United. Oh, they're exciting. They're not exciting. We all love them because they're easy to beat. There's no jeopardy in that. Honestly, honestly. It's just, it, it's embarrassing. It really is. I'm going to go to some super chats now. I ain't done no super chats yet today. Some super chats. Some super chats. I mean, the first time I came across Terry Flewers, I actually thought he was Jamie O'Hara because he's got that same... How, to, des- voice. how to describe... <laughs> annoying... He's, he's like a real cockney prick you might hear in a pub who you can hear over everyone. No mm. matter where you sat, you can hear his fucking... <laughs> Dickhead yapping on, and then you, you see him. Do you want to know what I think about Leeds? No. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> I hate having an opinion about it. Don't. I put it all in Bitcoin, mate. <laughs> that sort of knobhead. <laughs> no, mate, it's all in NFT. You yeah. don't understand it. <laughs> Fuck off, Terry. I mean, where to start on him? He's a, well, from he's what a I can gather fan. on, I thought he was a Chelsea fan. Oh, is he? I thought he was a scum fan. I just had a look at his Twitter, and it's constant Chelsea. There's oh, a photo of. Um, him with somebody in an Arsenal shirt. I don't know which one's which. The worst kind of prick. That's what we're saying. <laughs> and um, 
<laughs> yeah, all his Twitter feed is just news about... Oh, is it Chelsea? Oh, Chelsea. I knew he hated Leeds. But he also says that Edison Cavani like- to Barcelona has cooled. So thank you for that. I really like how we've completely played the man and not the ball here. Well, <laughs> we've not addressed what well, he's, he's talking about. There's more, talking of that, about, there's more um, of that to come. <laughs> like, when he's talking about Bielsa being uh, people prioritising personality over anything else, and then he lists Ferguson, Klopp, um, who else was in the Guardiola? All famously, you know, nobody's ever paid any attention to the personality traits of those managers. And, and a, a, it's not football manager. A manager's personality is a key part of the way that they coach a team. It's not, he can think what he likes about a man marking system, whether that belongs in the 1980s or the 2020s or not. The power of Bielsa is that he managed to convince a group of players to be so good at it that they got to ninth in the Premier League. So his personality is absolutely key. I just don't think, I mean, I'm not really going to take lessons about personality from internet personality Terry Flewers <laughs> shouting about yeah. things that he doesn't really care about because it would uh, be so under- easy. Or understand. So easy if he, I mean, yeah, now would go, you refer? Uh, would you refer to Bielsa as my G? <laughs> he's now, um, as I go he scroll is, back. He is my G to yesterday's tweets. God, he tweets a lot. There is now, I'm seeing Bruno Fernandez's face for I'm some on, reason. I'm so his, I get the feeling he might just be a Premier League Is he fan. a Premier League fan? Oh God, the worst kind of person. That's why he was all like, he wants Leeds out of his Premier League. I'm on his Twitter profile and his first thing it says is finance professional as well. So it is the big, I bet it is the fucking Bitcoins. I bet it'll, I bet it'll be on that for you. Finance professional. Oh content creator you hate the word content as well don't you moscow well i mean this, this is the absolute definition of content where you've given somebody um so a, a show on youtube to shout about things that they don't really care about and then they have to desperately think about what they're going to shout about this week so i'll just shout about bielsa even though i don't have any particular insight or anything new or interesting i don't know the first fucking thing about him <laughs> however i will just shout about it for a bit and that will fill a gap content you only need content if you've dug a hole that's all it does is just fill fill the hole that you've dug it's good to have you back <laughs> with them um, the thing about man marking as well saying like you can't use it in this day and age but we used it last season and yeah. the season before that and it did really well is there is there a cutoff point where this season it's been like it's been fine to the start of this season then it's like no who was it? Um, that must not happen anymore. Which team was it? You might remember because you dig out the clips, but one team earlier this season was complaining about the zonal marking system and said they should have gone man-to-man. Well, everyone who concedes goals complains about the marking system, <laughs> whether it's man-marking or zonal marking. You can see the goal from zonal marking, everyone goes, it's much better to go man-to-man. You, the ball goes in on a post. You need men on the post. The ball goes in from a header. What we have men on the post for? You need to be marking the men instead. It's, it's just, it's a, <laughs> a complete hindsight way of doing things that you can go, well, that's a... That's where they, they even do it on telly sometimes. They'll, a player they will know where a goal is going to be scored from. They'll draw a little box on where they know the ball is kicked into the goal. There should have been a defender, and then there. go. <laughs> defender needs to be marking that space. And you think, well, yeah, you know that now. If yeah. it, what, but if there'd have been someone there, they might have passed it the other way, and then there'd have been a space in this place instead, and someone might have scored from there. Again, one of the pleasures of having Bielsa in this Premier League is the way he does force you to think a bit more about things. And when he was talking about mistakes the other week, and he said, if you look at every goal, somebody will have made a mistake. Otherwise, goals don't happen. And what do you like about football? Do you like goals? Then you need mistakes. Yeah. So getting angry about mistakes is a waste of time because without them, the game is nil, every game is nil-nil. And he said he'd win every game, didn't he, if his team were robots? But who wants to watch robots? Well, exactly. That was his whole point, was not that he thought that a team of robots would be desirable and that's what he wants it's just that that's um impossible you have to deal with humans and they will either win or they won't right next clip sorry terry well terry's invited some other wanker on because he thought <laughs> he thought him is it thought, ethereum this time mate oh, he, he thought pump, pump he thought, ethereum he thought he, is it ethereum <laughs> is that the word uh probably the the um the got doge, a lot of chilies the doge got coins of- i bet he's got I bet he's well into the chili. So sure, it's all that bollocks. He'll be, he'll be firmly into it. I, I wish, really wish I'd not downloaded the app. I get notifications every day. We've got another Brazilian team that we've mm-hmm. managed to <laughs> call into our app. <laughs> <laughs> we've managed to persuade someone else that this is a good idea by Take our money. chucking some money at them. Um, but yeah, this is just some other dickhead. <laughs> I agree with you. Leeds, Leeds, Leeds is the most fraudulent, I'll talk about it, most fraudulent team in the league. Everybody 
for I couldn't stand it for the last few years talking about how amazing their football is and this. All I see is a bunch of dudes running around not playing defense. That's that's what I when I watch Leeds, I can't handle it. I don't think it's not I've never thought it's fun football. Just like you said, even with their first team, they're trash. Don't watch us then. If you can't stand <laughs> watch us, don't watch us and just fuck off. And, it, and is it, that is that a fair outcome? But it worked really well. Is fraudulent actionable? Mm. I hope Confu- so. confusing a, a club of fraud. Should we should we try and sue him? Well, not us, but maybe Leeds United want to take the case on. Anyway, next. next. I did actually just look at uh, your, your Terry Fluer's LinkedIn profile <laughs> um, about he specialises in implementing solutions to address regulatory reform in the banking, insurance and investment management sector. So why the fuck am I listening to his opinions on Marcelo Bielsa? <laughs> if he wants to do a banking podcast, fine, but I don't know why I need to uh, listen to him telling me that Bielsa is a Betamax. <laughs> this is a complete um, tangent, but I discovered this the other day while searching old Leeds players. Um, Monty Gimple is now um, a primary researcher at Norges, 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 Norges Bank Investment Management. Right. He's in the old finances, Monty Gimple. So yeah, that's good. He... He's now branded as Montgomery Gimple on LinkedIn, if you're trying branded. to find him. <laughs> He's using his name. Well, Mon- <laughs> I mean, he was always Monty, though, wasn't he, at Leeds? <laughs> Well, we call like he sure was Michelle. I'm fairly sure that the paperwork on his contract will have said Montgomery. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm going to still refer to him as Monty. Yeah, I mean, if you're in the, the changing room, you're not going to insist the lads call you Montgomery. <laughs> <laughs> Colin. So Monty will uh, will come up. But yeah, I mean, he... Um... <laughs> Getting annoyed at him for using his name. <laughs> it's a stupid name, Monty. <laughs> Apologies if you call Montgomery and you're listening. It's a good name. He's only been with them for uh, six months. He was at Bloomberg for a couple of years before that. Come on, next one. Um, oh, he was the... Uh, <laughs> sorry, but he was the assistant to the German representative of Invest Kazakhstan in mm. uh, 2018. He certainly wasn't a footballer, was he? Well, that is, that's the bottom of his profile. Professional football player, Leeds United Football Club, 2011 to 2013. Then a four-year gap, hopefully not David Haig style, before he became... <laughs> A marketing and business development intern at the Snooze Project in Berlin. Great, come on. Do you remember when people wanted him in the team? <laughs> people were like, "Well, they had a cool name." Pure, was, get him in. It was, it was pure agent hype, wasn't it? The yeah. whole thing. There was, there was, a, there was a photograph yeah. of him doing like a really cool volley. <laughs> so <laughs> he looked absolutely perfect for us. And to be honest, who did we have in 2012? Tom Lee's. He wouldn't get Lee's out of the team. Lee's and Bauer was uh, was not for moving. Come on, clips to get through. Let's do them. Come on then. Right. Never mind um, the banking sector. We're just sticking with um, with dickheads in this section. So, Gabby Agbon Lahore. Oh, God. Oh, do we have to? Yeah, go because on. Because we're giving it, I mean, to be fair, they're not getting ticks in diaries for listening figures, are they? Is this, no, is no. this talk spot? Of course. <sighs> okay. So I'm kind of doing this against my better judgment because it's essentially just clickbait in the form of a radio station. Yeah, but we can use it as a... We're as feeding, a, we're we're feeding, use, but we're feeding the no, beast no, here. Maybe he'll make some good points that we can discuss. Maybe, yeah. Oh, let's listen and find out, shall we? For me with Leeds United, they've been so far out of the Premier League. You know, so many years they've been in the um, Championship. They finally got into the Premier League. Surely they want to stay there. For me, 16 for, years, wasn't yeah, it? For me, I would change Bielsa. I feel that the way they're playing at the moment, it's very stubborn coaching. You know, you're playing against like big teams, world-class players, and you're going toe-to-toe. You can't do that in the Premier League. For me, I'll change it. I'll get someone in who can keep Leeds United up now. Because Burnley, you look at the table here, Burnley, I've got three games land on Leeds, five points behind them. Do you know, like, like they're, 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 they're playing with fire, they're playing with relegation, and... If they did go down, it might take them another 16 years to get back up. So for me, I just don't understand it, that the atmosphere at the ground, the fans are cheering. You're getting battered every week. It sounds it's, it's Sunday league scores. Like they're fully behind Bielsa. That, that's what it sounded yeah, like it, to it me this season. It baffles me because if, 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 if my team was losing like, like Leeds are losing, I wouldn't expect the fans to be clapping. You're getting humiliated, battered, Sunday league scores, 11 goals in two games. Like, this isn't how you play in the Premier League. Every team you play against, the top managers will change their tactics. We could have played like Newcastle, couldn't we? Only have uh, conceded four without one of our best lineups. That's that's another option. Do you know the reason why um, it baffles him? Uh, why it baffles him that we're supporting him? <laughs> He's thick. Correct. That's, that's exactly the word I've written down. It uh, baffles you because you're thick. I wonder, because he's saying we're not getting results, we need to change style. I wonder if he went on last year when Sam Allardyce was getting West Brom relegated and suggested they play 
total football instead. So you need to, what Sam yeah. needs to do. Change. He needs to change this style because it's not working. They're getting beaten. They, see, Leeds, Leeds absolutely battered them the other week. They need to do more like what Leeds are doing if they want to stay up. And Burnley is such a strange example. I know they have the games in hands, but where he's saying, you know, they're five points behind Leeds. This is Burnley. Yes, they're worse than us. Burnley have won one game all season. Yeah, so we need to be more like so Burnley. So their, their hot three, four game winning streak surely is just around the corner. All signs point to it. I mean, is it even true that teams adapt against the top teams? Because I don't think Burnley play any different against Manchester City. Burnley lose five nil every us. week, every yeah. year, don't they? <laughs> Every week. week is probably not far from accurate. But yeah, they they play the same way against Leeds as they play against Manchester City and lose both. They lost 4 0 to us last season and lost 5 0 to Man City. <coughs> so oh I don't know what the lessons are from any of this other than, you know, people. Can we, can will, we, uh, I, I'm not people Moscow. Will, I enjoy listening to you, Moscow, but let's hear some, some, no, some, some real say, insight. Well, people will complain when you use the word thick about somebody like Gabby. But he is thick. But what it means is <laughs> it's a thick. failure. It's a failure to imagine. Um, because he can't understand why Leeds fans will cheer because it's just some it's not something that he would do you're gonna, and it's a failure of imagination and being able to think beyond his own head you are that's thick you are going to change your opinion um when you hear his his tactical ideas but it's, it's worth saying that when Aston Villa were relegated and he was there his solution to that was keeping Tim Sherwood in charge because he liked Tim Sherwood right so it's almost like everyone he's, loved he's, him he's and then they brought, they brought in a Frenchman and he was like, ah. Oh, well, God. you can't know. I mean, that's the worst thing. So, so it's, it's almost, happen, almost, it? like, almost like Gabby Agbon Lahore changes his opinion mm. um, based on unique individual circumstances that will provoke a response in its aud- in his audience. Do you think that's maybe what he's doing? Potentially. That's, that's the one thing he's good at. Anyway, let's, trying to be controversial. Anyway, it's, this is, I mean, his tactical ideas are controversial. Are they as good as your tactical ideas? Wait till you hear this. Okay. I think Bielsa could play Bayern Munich tomorrow and put them um, ailing one on one versus Sane. You know, like if I'm a, if I'm if I'm a Leeds player, I'm saying in the change rooms afterwards, like, oh Lance, he's killing us, he's killing us. We can't yeah. do this. We can't. I'm not as good to go one v one against these superstars. Do you know what I mean? You got you got to have cover two v one all over the pitch. Right, two v one, twenty two men, all over the pitch. Yeah. That's his that's his method to sort this out, and that would help. I think. No, I mean, he's right because Bielsa likes overloads, and I can't think of a better overload than having twice as many players as them. I think the key part of that was um, the way Gabby is in a, a changing room, isn't it? This manager is yeah. killing us. Well, oh, we can't, we can't play like this. What's he doing? What well, we, we? Tim Sherwood, he, he'd have us playing. He'd have us, he'd have us off in the afternoons. We could go to the boozer. We could go to the bookies. It was great. It was a right laugh when he was there. Never this, mind this one-on-one training. This bloody frog's coming. He's got us running all, all hours of the day. Pathetic. <laughs> I can't even... He said I can't have four days off in a row. How am I meant to get to Dubai in that time? I mean, when you look at uh, Gabby Bonnehall from this time, he's getting a lot of criticism from Villa fans for basically being a, a lazy fat bastard who isn't interested in earning any of his £53,000 a week that he's getting paid. A contract that he remained on while they were in the championship. The other point here as well is talking about him going up against um, Sane. Uh, um, it's uh, Sane and Mane. I've got your confusion going it's on. Sane, Sane. Sane. Yeah, uh, Bayern Munich. He's not called Lee, right? <laughs> <laughs> Can be if you want. Do anything for this show. Um, and he's saying he could come up against against Sane. It's, well, no, he's not going to do because he's in the Champions League and we're not. And we're not in the Champions League because we've only just come up in the last couple of seasons and we're trying to develop our squad. So it's it's a completely false argument, isn't if it? And, we, uh... and yet when they do come up against the good teams, we've seen we get dicked this week when we've got injuries and all the rest of it. But, yeah, but if not, you're not play... playing against Sane yeah, but you've got to, week, you've got to remember that in his, in his system, you have two right backs, yeah, which is true. going to make it easier. But even still, you know, the point I'm making is like, is you're not coming up against Sane every week. You're not coming up against Phil Foden and mm. Sterling and all the rest of them. Most weeks we manage, you know. If we get to the point where we are playing Bayern Munich in the Champions League, then bless him, I love him. I don't think Luke Haling will be our right back. Oh. So we'll probably have a better right back who can maybe do a good job against Sane one, one-on-one. So maybe it's just you have a, a squad or capable of adapting to your circumstances. If we have got into the Champions League with Luke Haling, it's because he's got so much better than he is now that Sane won't be a problem. With much as you wouldn't have thought he could take on a wet paper bag when <laughs> um, Paul Heckingbottom was in charge of him. But now he's regarded as one of the best right backs in the country who was on the edges of the England squad. How many uh, caps does Gabby Akbonlahor have? 
Well, it's interesting you you come to pick on his career because that's what we're about to do um, after this next clip. Oh, we have to talk more about him and hear from him. I'm not too playing against football. Leeds. I'll be like, come on then, where's the goals? Let's go 1v1. I get past you. I'm through in on goal. Mm. Let's look at his record. How, how old is he now? <laughs> uh, I don't know, actually. He's Let's not, find out. He's not actually as, as old as you think, but you can see why he retired when you sp- he speaks about these goals because his last three seasons at Aston Villa, yeah, he got three. He's, uh, he's one, one per season. He's 35. 35, okay, so he could still... He's only 35. Just turned 35 in October, yeah. Could still be playing. La- played his last game in 2017-18. Um, but yeah, he got... So he got three goals in his in his last three seasons at Aston Villa. That's one goal in 11 games. That's good for a striker. Um, and then in his last... If you think that's a bit harsh, because I know he had injuries and um, obesity and holidays to deal with in that time, which, which obviously hampered him... <laughs> But if you look, even if you go back to his last eight seasons, he was only one goal in five. So just to draw some comparisons here, he's uh, he's younger than James Milner, who will be thirty six in January in a couple of weeks. And, uh, and obviously Cristiano Ronaldo. I know we don't like to hold him up as any sort of example whatsoever, but just I'd to hold him up as an example of somebody to stay away from. If you no, but I'm on saying a lonely street on a dark night. Absolutely, but I'm just saying, like when you look at their relative physical performance, you, you can think what you like about him. Otherwise, I shouldn't have brought this up, should I? Let's just leave Cristiano Ronaldo out of let's do any that. discussion. It's better got, to just I'm, pretend he's not let's around. Let's go uh, Joaquin, the Spanish winger. He's 40 and still playing. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. If, if you want another comparison as well, uh, Gabriel Bonlahor thinks that Bielsa is a joke. Gabriel Batistuta, almost too afraid to approach him because he reveres him so much. But then when he does, gets a, what he described as a soul hug from somebody he, he respects and um, admires. Gabriel Bonlaha, 35, and his last acceptable Premier League season was probably 2009-10 when he got 13 goals. Whereas Bielsa's last acceptable Premier League season, last season. Exactly. I think Bielsa would, if you put Bielsa into a Premier League team now, he'd score more goals than Gabriel Bonlaha. <laughs> <laughs> and Christ, we've had Stan Collymore chirping up this morning. I don't, I don't think I can tolerate Collymore on top of uh, Agbon Lahore. It's, it's too, I mean, no offence to anybody who's from the West Midlands. Love you dearly if you're listening to this, but it's a lot to take on <laughs> in one day. Admittedly, it is only a newspaper column, but you would still you hear still it in our voice. You do still yeah. hear it. It comes down to, I've just skipped to the end. Burnout. It comes down to, yeah, actually, um, he has three questions. He says, I'd love to take up um, an invite to Thorpe Arch, which he spelt wrong. He's putting E on the end of Thorpe. Uh, C training and post three questions. Why? Aged 60 odd. He keeps bringing Bielsa's age into it, and I don't know why. This it was Stan Collymore who thought he needed to live um, in a gated mansion, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, why, aged sixty odd, did he think having such a small squad was prudent, given this league is like a grand national, exhausting with loads of hurdles? Well, because it worked last season, so that's one. Do you give them plenty of rest? And if not, do you think burnout is an issue? I think he gives them rest. I think he's familiar with the idea of resting players and do you feel as a coach even in your 60s you can always learn different things from other coaches that can make you better as a manager well what do you think he does when he's watching the finished third division and an actual real example is when he had all his staff watching um the world cup to analyze new trends in set pieces so yes he's always learning always studying the game to an extent that I imagine would blow Stan Collymore's tiny mind. I've got a question. Given that you're a man in your 50s, do you think it's appropriate to sit in a darkened car park at night <laughs> with your headlights off? Because he's 50 now, he's Stan, you see. Is he, is he waiting to fight Graham Smith or is it for something else? Could, whatever he wants to do with his leisure time. I mean, oh. we, will, we are going to all have to go to Cannock and have a, a bare knuckle with him because uh, that is... That is his standard re- response after the Twitter block, or sometimes before the Twitter block, he'll he'll offer someone a fight, and then he'll um, he'll block them afterwards, won't he? So. And just to spin back to the start of this article, Leeds have invited me to their training ground to see what Marcelo and the club are all about, which is very kind, and I'd love to. So I'll tell you what, go ask those questions. Will you ask them? Will you fuck? Well, yeah, I mean, this is it. I would I would also love to have an invite to Thorpe Arch, and if I were to accept it, I'd try not to ask three such fucking stupid questions. That would be my my plan. Mm. Okay. Well, that's no, I've up. already answered for him. There's absolutely no need for him to go there and ask these stupid questions when absolutely anybody can answer them. Ask for something him. more insightful, like where do you do, get these cones from? Do something you, like that. He wants to travel all the way from Cannock 
to Thorpe Arch, which you can't spell, so we probably won't find it, and then go in there, sit Bielsa down and say, do you give the players any rest? Get out! Just stop wasting everybody's time. And then he'll, of course, have to offer to fight a city man in his 60s, which is... Because that's the way he resolves people who disagree with him, isn't it? It's, indeed. Uh, it's uh, through the old uh, fisticuffs yes. that chase. If they oh. won't answer your stupid questions, punch them. <laughs> Right. That does wrap up this episode of uh, of propaganda. I feel like we vented a little bit then. It feels like we're, we'll come back from this. We'll all heal. Uh, it's the way it's got to go. There's two ways. We've lost two games really badly this week, and the Chelsea one was annoying. You either get annoyed about Leeds United, and it is quite easy because Leeds United are quite annoying. Thank you, Gabby and Stan, and the rest of you, Terry, for giving me something to rail against. I'm really happy that we lost those games because this happened a bit last season. When we lost to Scum 6-2, and it was a whole period of us like being the crazy result stuff, everybody else in football was more annoyed about us losing 6-2 to Scum than we ever were. And I've now moved into that. I'm glad we lost those games. What, 7 plus 4? 11-1. <laughs> 13 in a week, Moscow. Because of the way it's wound these idiots up. <laughs> So as long as we finish 17th, it was worth it. Yeah, because it's all going to be fine. We're not going to be relegated. It will be fine. Bielsa's methods in the end will prove to be good enough to keep us in the Premier League for two seasons, which is what we asked him to do in the first place. And these people will have wound themselves up. He's ruining my Premier League. Good. I hope he stays around and ruins your Premier League for him. Well, that's the whole reason we're in the Premier League, to, <laughs> to ruin, ruin it, it for other people. And if the best way to ruin the Premier League for other people is to keep losing 7-0, that's what we're going to do. Great. Perfect. Do you agree with all that, Michael? I mean, it's got a shelf life as losing 7-0 every week. Um, I don't think we can continue to do that, Andrew, in the Premier League. Just win enough to stay in. Okay. But in the meantime... Win five games and then lose the rest 7-0. Yeah. In the meantime, let's piss everybody off and then let's just come on here and take cheap shots at people for the, either the size of the club or for the regional accent. Is that they all keep, right? They keep losing. Why do they keep singing? To annoy you. <laughs> we'll catch you in a bit. The Square Ball Podcast.